Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. I'd like to thank you all for the positive comments you've given me on my last couple of videos. If you find these of value, please share them with your quilting friends. Before I get to my opinion, I'd like to address two of those comments. One was a viewer noted that I failed to inform you that you need more backing fabric if you're going to match the fabric. What does matching the fabric mean? It means that you make the repeats meet up where the seam is so that you can't see the joining at all. I've got two examples here for you. They are so hard to see, I had to put a black friction pen on it so you could see where the um, seam is. Can you see the black line here? You can see how everything meets up. And once I take that friction pen off with heat, you would never be able to see the back seam. Here again is another one. This one, you can, I'm just holding it up. You will never see where that seam is. I did put a black line on it, so it is here, but if you look at it, you'd never notice that there was a seam there. So you need more because if you're seaming vertically to get them to meet up, you'll, you'll have to adjust one of the panels. So you'll lose some at the top and some at the bottom and the same side to side if you're trying to meet them. So if you do want to um, meet your fabric, match your fabric, you do need extra yardage. So just to be aware. The other um, comment was, would I address 108 inch wide backings? And 108 inch wide backings are available a lot of places online and many shops carry them. I'm a tiny shop. We are not big enough to carry 108 inch wide backings. And sometimes you can find them in three yard pieces. So a 108 inch wide backing would, if you got three yards, would be equivalent to nine yards of fabric. And if you needed nine yards of fabric for a backing, it's a really big quilt. So most of the quilts that I make are 50 to 60 wide, 60, 70, big would be 80 for me in length. So I generally don't need 108 inch wide backings. So we really piece all of ours. But if you do make gigantic quilts, it's really nice to have them available. And you can find them in many different patterns from many different manufacturers. So they're out there if you need them. Now, let's get to my opinion. In watching videos this past week, I was watching Donna Jordan, and she was doing a quilt called Cartwheels by Fig Tree. And the first thing she showed was to make a square in a square block. And she had you cut a square. She doesn't tell you the size because it's not her pattern, so you don't have any numbers. But she takes a square, and takes four small squares, marks on the diagonal, stitch, stitch, press, press, cut off the excess, then do the same over here, and then you get a square and a square block with this amount of waste. And of course, you can imagine my reaction. Why would you want to waste? Granted, um, some of you collage quilters out there might use these little pieces. These are even too small, I think, for many of the people who then sew here and make a half square triangle unit. Um, but for me, this ends up in the dog bed stuffing. And for many of you, I think it ends up in the landfill. I, of course, much prefer the Deb Tucker square in a square or square squared unit. And in this, you only cut one square, which is much smaller than this one, as you can see. And two squares, which are larger than these, cut on the diagonal. And so the two, the uh, half square triangles of these onto here so that you get this unit and this is your trimmed off waist. So I prefer this waist to this waist. However, you might say, well, it's not much difference. It isn't. This uses a little bit less fabric, has a little bit less waist. But if you say, I have to make 64 of these to make the quilt, this pile gets really big. 
So in my opinion, if a pattern says to do a square and a square unit this way, I think you would be much better served to do it the Deb Tucker way, less cutting, less work, less waste. Now let's get to the episode. My pattern calls for fat quarters. Can I use regular yardage? That's a question we get in the shop all the time. The answer is perhaps most of the time. Let me see your pattern. Let's talk about how we determine if you can take a fat quarter pattern and switch it to what we call long quarters. You could call them skinny quarters, you could call them regular quarters. They're all the same thing. They're nine inches by full width of the fabric as opposed to a fat quarter, which is 18 inches by half the width of the fabric. So one of the videos I watched this past week had a pattern in it that called for the use of fat quarters. And the woman cut two inch strips, four of them, and then two eight inch squares. Now I apologize, this is not to scale because this is 16 inches this way, which you've got an 18 inch piece, so you're fine. And this is about 21 inches this way. That's how the pattern was cut in the video I was watching. So you can take a nine inch by full width of fabric piece and cut it in half, cut two inch strips, four of them this way, which eight is less than nine, so you're good, and then two eight inch squares. This is probably the easiest one to see that yardage will work rather than fat quarters. Now in the next two examples, I'm using two Atkinson design patterns. And while Terry Atkinson has retired, her patterns are still being sold. She sold the business to somebody else. There are some of the best written patterns in the business. You know I complain about poorly written patterns. These do not fall under that category. So here is Tile Tango. This is calls for fat quarters. Can I use regular quarters? In this example, again, easy, yes. Tile Tango has you cut six two and a half inch strips from each fat quarter. Well, if you have a long quarter, you've got double in each one strip. So six can become three strips. Three times two and a half is seven and a half, which is less than nine inches. So you can absolutely use a regular quarter for the fat quarters in Tile Tango. Now we have another uh, issue with um, her yellow brick road pattern, which has been always one of the most popular patterns. Give me a second, I'm gonna change out my whiteboard so we can go over the yellow brick road pattern. Okay, yellow brick road. It has you cut one six and a half inch strip and three three and a half inch strips from each fat quarter. No matter how you slice it, you cannot get 10 inches into a nine inch piece. You could cut your six and a half inches, then you could use three and a half here, and you could get two, three, if you had enough width, two, three and a halves here, but six and a half and three and a half is 10. It will never be less than nine. So you cannot cut the yellow brick road pattern out of nine inch width yardage. What options do you have? Well, there's a few. One, you can change the size of the block, and I'm going to go over that in the next whiteboard. I know a lot of people um, have liked that I've given you the math, and just to reinforce it again, I'm going to go through the calculations how to change the size of the yellow brick road block to fit yardage. The other option, another option is get a third of a yard of fabric. That would give you 12 inches. So if this was 12 inches, you could do this. Six inch, half, three and a half, and two three and a halves. 10 is less than 12. A third of a yard would work. Another option is to use half yards and purchase half as many. For example, the twin size of the yellow brick road calls for 18 fat quarters. You could get nine half yard pieces instead of 18 
uh, fat quarters. What does that do? It gives you a little less variety, but it would work if that's what you want to do. Now I'd like to go through the calculations of how to change the block size for the yellow brick road to fit a nine inch piece of yardage. Let's change the block size of the yellow brick road to make it that you can use a nine inch width fabric. The block is a nine inch block and all the pieces are cut six and a half pieces or three and a half inch pieces. So I decided to change the block size to a six inch block size, which is two thirds the size of nine. So if you take six and a half, remember take off the seam allowance, it now becomes six. And I wrote here times two thirds, but if you're using your calculator, remember that's 0.667. You won't get exactly four, but you'll know from your calculator that four is the number. It's close enough that you'll know that's correct. So four plus a half then, add back the seam allowance, is now a four and a half inch piece. Same thing with three. Three and a half minus a half is three. Two thirds of three or times 0.667 is two. Add your seam allowance back in is two and a half. So now if I have a nine inch width by full width of fabric, I can take half of it and get a four and a half inch piece. And my three, now two and a half instead of three and a half, adds up to seven and a half. Seven and a half is less than nine, so it works. Now what happens when you come into the instructions in Yellow Brick Road where it says cut a five inch by six and a half inch rectangle. Well, we've already done the six and a half, so you know that the six and a half is the four and a half. But what's the five number? You go through the same procedure. Five minus a half is four and a half times two thirds or 0.667, and that equals three plus a half is three and a half. So now you're going to cut a three and a half by four and a half inch rectangle, which finishes to three by four. So it's really quite easy. And as I've always said, I like little bit smaller blocks better than bigger blocks. So I have actually not yet ever made a yellow brick road, no matter how popular it is and how many copies we've sold. But I'm thinking maybe I wanna make a six inch block one and I bet I could find a bunch in my stash that would work and use up some of that stash that I've got sitting here. Well, that's today's episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Happy sewing.